Left Peru and sailed to England alone. There he met the Browns and they took him home. Now a new life has begun. He's Windsor Gardens' favorite son. Cause he always does his best to help everyone. When a problem appears, he never misses a beat. And always finds a way to land on his feet. Has his very own unique point of view. Looks at everything as if it's brand new. He is friendly and polite. And he tries to do things right But he gets in sticky messes just the same He's curious and speaks his mind But trouble's never far behind It's Paddington Bear, he's one of a kind I'm Paddington Bear What a lovely afternoon I do hope Paddington is enjoying himself He told me he was going to read a book this afternoon. Really? I'm not sure I like the sound of that. He told me he'd be watching television. There's nothing in this world like Granny Green's smooth, silky, delicate, old-fashioned butter toffee. You can say that again, Mrs Green. Mine's nothing like it. Peculiar smell. Smells like trouble, if you ask me. Now, pour the delectable coffee <coughs> into a waiting saucepan. Don't mind if it's a little sticky. Just let it ooze. Isn't that wonderful? It's not wonderful. It's stuck. Yummy, yummy. Now, get your spoon. You'll want to taste your toffee. Superb! <laughs> what? My toffee wasn't anything like Granny Green's, and I didn't know how she cooked things so quickly. And don't forget our delicious golden brown apple pie to have with our toffee. Here's one I prepared earlier. Now she tells me. I can hear voices. Oh, I just wish I had brought the key. I think we'd better try the back door. I can't see a thing. The window's all fogged up. It looks awfully hard, Mrs Green. Go on, have a little taste. It doesn't matter if it hasn't hardened yet. It's so delicious and silky and soft. <laughs> Now, hurry back to your other part and give it a stir before it gets a chance to set. Open that door. Oh. Whoa. Oh, this just won't do. Ah! What on earth is going on? It's not a catastrophe, Mrs. Bird. It's Granny Green's toffee. Toffee? It looks more like Henry's carpentry glue. I'm afraid it is a bit thick. Granny Green said... Now, pour your second pot of toffee into a saucepan before it hardens, and we can begin our third recipe. Granny Green's delectable lemon meringue pie. Ho, oh, oh, oh. Not in this kitchen, Granny Green. I've never seen such a mess. There's toffee everywhere. I suggest a certain young bear had better get a scrubbing brush. Whoa! Oh! Paddington, is something wrong? Oh! I've got a pain in my stomach. You haven't been eating this stuff, have you? Ow! Uh, Mrs Green told me to, so I ate the piece I chiselled out. Chiselled out? No wonder you've got a pain. The toffee's probably set in a hard lump in your stomach. Now, let's get you to the sofa, where you'll be more comfy. Ow! 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 That's it. I'm calling an ambulance. An ambulance? I've never been in one of those before. Oh, 
poor young Mr. Brown. He didn't look too good to me. I'd better tell Mr. Gruber and get him to spread the word. We're on our way. Stand by to receive patients suffering from severe stomach pains. Over. That's quite enough of that. This is an emergency. Have your best surgeon standing by. Over and out. You. Faster. Oh, in an ambulance. I'm just on my way with the others to the hospital. Clear the way. Emergency. Stop. I will be the judge of whether this is an emergency. Before the patient is admitted, I must take his blood pressure. Oh, he's all furry. Get him into intensive care at once and call Sir Mortimer Carraway. Tell him it's an emergency. Mr. Paddington Brown, I presume. I am Sir Mortimer Carraway. I understand your problem is abdominal pain. Why, yes. It is an abominable pain, and it's in my stomach. Yeah, of course. Straighten out your legs, please. I'm afraid I can't, Sir Mortimer. Ouch! Hmm. And does it hurt when I do this? Ow! Or this? Ooh. Or this? Ooh. Hmm. Nurse, scissors. Don't you mean scalpel, Sir Mortimer? No, I do not. And someone fetch me some shaving cream and a razor. Quickly! Doctor, shouldn't we first put the bear, um, I mean the patient, under? Under? I'd rather not go under the table. I'm fine up here, thank you. I shall never forgive myself if anything happens to that bear. I don't know what his Aunt Lucy will have to say. Any word from no, the doc? We could as quickly as we could. He's still in emergency surgery. He's been diagnosed with a rather sticky situation in the midriff that prevents proper locomotion. Oh. The name of the disease is Great Galloping Toffee Drops. <laughs> in short, a bad case of the Granny Greens. <laughs> Look at my scar, everyone. The toffee had dried and stuck my fur together, so I couldn't stand up until Sir Mortimer cut it off. You're oh, all right. Fantastic. Oh, have some that marmalade. Turn. And what will you do with that fur, Paddington? Put it in your scrapbook as a memento. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to put it under my pillow. Under your pillow? Whatever for? Everybody's heard of the Tooth Fairy, so who knows? There could be one who looks after fur. renting this car wasn't such a bargain after all, Mr. Gruber. I'm afraid you're right, Mr. Brown. At a dollar a day, I think they may have seen us coming. Oh. Well, at least we've reached civilization. I shall try to get some assistance at that garage. See the world for free. That's just what we need to research Mr. Gruber's book, The World and Its Wonders. I think I'll inquire about this holiday tour. Now, where did Mr. Brown get to? Mr. Gruber, we've struck lucky at last. We not only get to see the world for free, but they promised to pay us. All aboard! Hurry, Mr. Gruber, the ah. tour's leaving. Oh. <laughs> right. The tour is now departing. I just had to sign a few forms, and they gave me these brochures. Oops. They have places to stay all over the world. Oh, dear, Mr. Brown. I think I know why. We've enlisted in the United States Army. seem perfect for your book, Mr. Gruber. Who no recruits, sir? Privates Brown and Gruber, sir! Could you please direct us to our rooms? We'd like a nice hot bath after our journey. And please could we have a plate of marmalade sandwiches sent up? Marmalade sandwiches? This ain't no holiday camp. Arms out. One pair of fatigues, one pair of boots, one helmet, one canteen, 
One gas mask. <gasps> Mr. Brown, this gentleman believes that we have enlisted in the United States Army. I'm sure once he's heard our explanation, he will gladly accept our apologies. I'm not a gentleman. I'm your drill sergeant. And the only thing I'll gladly accept is that you get in a uniform, call me sir, and get to work with these. <laughs> yes, sir. You... I want every speck of rust scrubbed off that gate. Every hinge oiled. I want it as shiny as a mirror and as quiet as a mouse. You got that, soldier? But my squeak, Mr. Sergeant, and... Why, you... Come, Mr. Brown. By the time we'd finished, we'd worn away most of the bristles on our brushes. We were getting a bit bored with the whole thing. Hey, I used to be quite good at this as a kid. Go ahead, your turn. I win, sir. Hey, back to barracks. You got a 10-mile run of dawn. We get up with the rising sun. They go out and run. They go out and run and run. Oh, is this little run too hard on Private Brown? It's a bit difficult when your boots don't fit. Look. Ah. Uh, Anything else bothering you? You just tell your old Sarge, huh? Well, now that you mention it, the marmalade at breakfast this morning was rather thin. I prefer the chunky variety. You'll get no marmalade, thin or otherwise, unless you finish this run and hustle down to the obstacle course now! Oh. Oh. How was it, Mr. Uh. Huber? Oh. 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 Oh dear. Next to go, go! <laughs> no, 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 you're doing it all wrong. Never in all my years of molding raw recruits into decent soldiers have I come across such a bungling, blundering bear. At... Sentry duty! And you can keep him company! If we could just explain to the sergeant that our being here has all been a dreadful mistake. It would be a pity to leave before we get paid. What was that? Halt! Who goes where? Um, there! Oh, we are... Gotta get this Jeep to the garage. Why don't you use the front gate? Um, it's, uh, it's kind of rusty. Squeaks a lot. Uh, we didn't want to wake anybody up. That's very kind of you. But last night, Mr. Gruber and I... F <laughs> Goodness me, time to be going. A sentry's work is never done. Those men are up to no good, Mr. Brown. Keep an eye on them while I fetch the sergeant. If necessary, you must try to stall them. How do you stall a cheat? Aha! Mm -hmm. Mr. Sergeant? Mm -hmm. Sir? Mm. What? Hey! Weren't you out on sentry duty? Please forgive my disturbing you, but some men are stealing jeeps. I've left Mr. Brown in charge and... You've done what? Are you mad? There's no telling what he'll do. Oh, what my word. The... Stutter up! Stutter up! When you got something that needs done, when you got something that needs done, go ask Private Paddington. Go ask Private Paddington. <clears throat> the United States Army thanks you for stopping the theft of military vehicles. And here are honorable discharges since you're both citizens of the United Kingdom. And to help you explore the wonders of America, your very own Jeep. Perhaps we should join the Navy next, Mr. Gruber. Maybe they'll give us a boat.
I don't know who first said that life is full of ups and downs, but whoever it was, they certainly knew what they were talking about. Oops. Pardon me, I believe this is yours. CC32973296. Yes, that's mine. Thank you very much. I've only just taken it out of the bank. Glad to be of service. And if I may be so bold, where are you off to on this fine June morning? I'm doing my Christmas shopping while the summer sales are on. It's something I learnt from my Aunt Lucy. What would you say if I told you that by Christmas you could be rich? Rich? Allow me to introduce myself. Dandy's the name. Stocks and shares are my game. Those few pounds you've taken out of the bank could grow into much more. Just think of the Christmas presents you could buy. Now, what do you think you were just sitting in? A puddle of oil. Oh, <laughs> quite right. But that oil isn't simply lying there. It's seeping up through the ground. Any day now, it's going to start pouring out. Anyone who buys shares in the Portobello Oil Company will become rich. Now, if I could just have your name and address... It's Paddington Brown, and I'm from 32 Windsor Gardens. But this says £25, and I've only taken out £20. Any more, and I'd have to close my account. Tell you what, I'll let you buy a share on credit. Give me what you have, and you can pay me the rest later. That's very kind, Mr Dandy. But what about my shopping? My Aunt Lucy taught me. I'm sure the shops round here will trust you to pay when your money rolls in. What a good idea. Be sure to keep this under your hat until the oil drills arrive. Mr Dandy was right. All the shop owners said I could pay for the gifts as soon as I received the money from the oil shares. I'm sorry I'm late, Mr Gruber. I've been doing my Christmas shopping. Not spending all your money, I trust. You should always leave some by for a rainy day. I've put mine by for an oily day. It's funny you should say that. I have just been reading about a trickster called Jim the Dandy. It seems he has been selling bad shares in something called the Portobello Oil Company. <laughs> <laughs> a fool and his money are soon parted. Everyone knows shares are sold at the Stock Exchange, not in the Portobello Road. Bad shares? The Stock Exchange? Yes, that Jim the Dandy sounds like a nasty piece of work. Mm. There is only one thing worse than selling something that isn't there to sell, and that is buying something and not paying for it. Huh. The Portobello Oil Company? Oh, no. It may not be a good share, but it's all I have. And I gave Mr Dandy all my Christmas present money. Poor Prince. Hmm. Have you left your mark on everything you've touched today? I slipped in some oil when I came out of the bank this morning. That's how I met Mr Dandy. That scoundrel is probably spending your money at this very moment. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Brown. Mr. Gruber said people normally buy shares at the stock exchange. It made me think that since it's called an exchange, they must let people swap bad shares for good ones. Good morning. I have some bad news for you, Mrs. Jones. There is a trickster at work in the market. He's selling bogus shares in an oil company. That's funny. The gentleman who just left paid me with this. It's got oily marks all over it. Oh, I owe you five pounds, Mrs Jones. Buy 2,000 shares of Zacking. Got it? Then sell 10,000 of Blankfields. Excuse me, I'd like to exchange my share, please. Exchange your share? Hey, who let you in here? Mr Gruber told me it's a bad share and I... Bad share? This share? Why? It's a fake! Fake shares? Which ones? Bad shares! Sell! Sell all of them! Sell! Sell all of them! Fake 
shares on the market? Sell! Sell! You! Look what you've done! Arrest that bell! That will be fourteen pounds, please. Ha-ha! Caught you red-handed, Jim the Dandy. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. Ah! Ow! Call the police. This is the scoundrel who's been selling bogus oil shares. The bear that just left was trying to trade in this fake share. Paddington Brown, 32 Windsor Gardens, eh? I'll have to call this one in. Good evening, madam. And does a Mr. Paddington Brown live here? Oh, dear. He's not in trouble, is he? On the contrary. We're here to return his money. You'll find him in the cupboard under the stairs. Anyone at home? I'm sorry. I'm guilty. I'll never buy a bad chair again. Don't worry, Mr. Brown. Thanks to you, they've caught Jim the Dandy. Your paw prints led straight to him. It's a pity there aren't more bears like you around to help outsmart thieves like this. Are these your notes? Yes, they are. I wrote the numbers down in my notebook. I always do. It's something my... I know, I know. Don't tell me. It's something your Aunt Lucy taught you. However did you know that, Mr Dandy? 